the recording. Hey y'all, Nani here. Welcome to my channel. You can call me Nani. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. I did it right this time. Uh, so subscribe especially because like I have said before, really am trying to uh, build up a community of people that are dealing with chronic illness um, and want, you know, maybe have questions, that kind of thing. I've been going through it for years, so it's kind of old hat to me now, but I can speak about my experience and then hopefully other people will join uh, the channel and can talk about their experience and so on. But in the meantime, I also want to throw in some fun stuff because in the middle of this pandemic and I don't have a job, uh, I want to have some fun, shoot, you know, and I've, you know, just whatever. I want to have some fun. I don't got to explain myself. Okay. So not that I ever have felt like y'all need me to anyway. So first thing I want to do is talk about ET, but in order to do that, I thought I should bring along Reese's Pieces. Actually, Reese's Pieces. But I think everybody, at least everybody in the South says Reese's Pieces because it rhymes and it's fun, right? So I always thought that uh, these came out when the movie came out. I thought it was like one of those marketing things. Of course, you know, back then when the movie came out, I think the movie came out in 1982, so I was 13. So I was not like uh, a movie guru or anything by any means, but I just kind of thought like, oh, okay, it's a new movie and they made this candy for this movie, right? Uh, but no, that is not the case. That's not what happened. Hold on just a second. Okay, here we go. So, um, the Reese's Pieces came out in 1977. Uh, so that is 82. That's five years before the movie. Now, obviously, uh, who's the company that owns Reese's? Is it Reese's? No, it can't be Reese's. It, it's, what is it? Hershey. Hershey. So, who knows if Hershey owned them at the time. I should have looked that up, then I, but I didn't. So, sorry. I'll get better at reviewing this stuff when I get better at reviewing this stuff. But, um, anyway, I just always thought these came out because of the movie. But, in the beginning of the movie, oh, just real quick synopsis. The movie's called E.T. Extraterrestrial. And, by the way, Reese's Peanut Butter Pieces are literally just they're like M&M's but instead of chocolate inside there's peanut butter just peanut butter no chocolate and um there's only let me see three colors that's what I should have done that would have been fun huh if I did like a Reese Pieces colored makeup my daughter could do that. Uh, brown, yellow, and orange. Ooh, such a beautiful color combination. Look at that. Can you see? There you go. Beautiful, right? But they're delicious. Um, pop these in some ice cream and they're good. So, anyway, I thought it would be fun to bring these. Um, the synopsis, 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 synopsis is a brain thing, I think. Anyway, the synopsis of the movie is, um, E.T. Extraterrestrial, there is this little alien, um, he's so cute. Mm, if we were going to do a beauty contest between him and E.T., I mean him and Yoda, I don't know, because I grew up with Yoda, too. Um, they both have different qualities. So, Yoda has qualities of, like, an old man, which, who doesn't love an old man? You know what I mean? 
and ET is more childlike qualities. Um, but if we were to put ET up against Baby Yoda, forget it, it's over. Baby Yoda's gonna win every time. And um, one of these days I will get my hands on a Baby Yoda because I want one. Anyway, so the synopsis is ET, his ship and some of his shipmates come down to planet Earth and I guess are gathering like plant life, right? For research or whatever. And E.T. goes off. I don't know if he's a younger um, E.T. I don't know if they have like an age thing or whatever, but he goes off and he sees the uh, big city lights of L.A. down in the valley. And by the time he gets back, he notices his ship is going off. Like it's flying up and he's like, oh crap, what am I going to do? Um, anyway, little boy, Elliot, discovers E.T., uh, plots to try to keep him, but then turns out, you know, E.T.'s not doing so great being away from his home. Um, the, I don't think the atmosphere is super great for him, like long term. Um, so eventually Elliot decides he needs to help E.T. E.T. keeps learning how to communicate the more and more that it goes on. And that's where you get the phone home. E.T. phone home. That's one of the most famous lines in the movie. Um, I think he's watching a commercial. He's watching TV. And he's watching a commercial that I think I remember seeing about grandparents using the phone to call their grandkids or something. So, and he's like, oh, okay. I just need to phone home. So, Elliot just decides to start helping him. In the meantime, he's trying to keep all this away from his mom. You know, he doesn't want his mom to find out. Elliot has a younger sister named Gertie, played by Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. She's so cute in this movie. Oh, my God. And then his older brother, his name was Mike. I have no idea what the actor's name is. Um... He's just your typical teenage boy at the time, you know. And then their mom. I don't know what her name is. I don't know why I want to say it's Diane. I don't know. I'm such a, you know, professional movie reviewer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm killing it. <laughs> I'm going to get better, y'all. But anyway, I think that might be the actress's name. I'm not sure. And because I don't have a vlogging camera, I can't just look it up while I'm on the phone with you. So, goals. One of these days, goals. Maybe when I get more subscribers, uh, maybe I'll make a goal. Like, if I get to, I don't know, I'm at six now. Maybe if I get to 20 subscribers, I'll get a vlogging camera. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so his mom, can't remember what her name is, but she's so pretty. She was in um, The Howling, which is another great movie, which I think I'll say for uh, October Halloween -y movie reviews, if I remember. You know, you know me and my brain. Uh, and then she was also in Cujo, which is another... I'm either going to save that for Halloween movie reviews or make a whole Stephen King. I'll probably make a whole Stephen King uh, review because he is my all-time favorite author of all time. Like, all time. I absolutely I am obsessed with this man. I love him. 
Uh, I have been reading his books since I think I was like 12, probably not appropriate, but I did. Um, I can't even remember the name of the first one that I read. I feel like it was, I feel like it was Cujo though. Darn it, which one? I wish I had better memories, y'all, but I don't know. I know that I read it. And I know that I saw this movie, E.T. I have no recollection of going to a movie theater. I have no recollection of who I went and saw it with. I just know I saw it. So, anyway. Um, but his mom is having a hard time of it. Uh, she is recently separated from her husband who we find out during the movie he's gone off to Mexico with some lady so you know I think we know why they're separated um so that said so she's dealing with that and the fact that she's got you know three kids which is a lot by yourself a teenager and then a little girl and then of course Elliot who's just full of energy but anyway so as time goes on, we find that Elliot and E.T. have a more of a telepathic connection, right? Um, a physical and telepathic connection where if E.T. is scared or hurt, uh, Mike, not Mike, oh my God, Elliot, Elliot feels that. So there's a scene where E.T.'s at home watching TV, but there's all these like scary things happening on the TV, scary sounds, scary things that he's knocking into or whatever, and um, Elliot is feeling all of this at home. And then I think, oh, there was something where he gets really tired or so. I don't know if he got into, oh, he drank a beer. He drank a beer. He got into the fridge and he drank a beer and then, of course, little Elliot started feeling drunk. You know, E.T. got drunk too, but little Elliot was feeling drunk at school. Um, so, um, anyway, so that's really, you know, the synopsis. You know, what happens when uh, an extraterrestrial gets trapped on Earth? You know, ones that mean no harm. This is not like other you know, uh, movies of that sort. This one is really endearing. This one is, um, you know, it's, it's a legendary movie. It will never not, this is, this will go on for generations and generations and generations, even though there was only one, it wasn't like Star Wars where there's a billion, bazillion of them, but it was the, really the first of its kind like that and the alien it looks so real there was no cgi back then um but just the way that they did it there's all kinds of trivia like if you watch it on amazon um and i got it on amazon for like eight dollars so go over there now and see if you can grab it for that much but there, if you watch it on your phone there's a lot of different trivia which i wrote some down i don't know um, let's see. The movie was released in 1982. Uh, let's see. Five aliens come down. Collect plants. And he's, and E.T. is just like, everything he sees, you know, he, he's walking by these giant redwood trees and he sees the city lights and he's just mesmerized by everything. He's just like, like this and you can feel it you know um anyway so his ship leaves without him and he's kind of tripping and wondering what to do and somehow somehow he wakes it makes his way into elliot's shed um d wallace that is the mother's name that's the actress that's the actress name i think mama's her name on the show is diane d wallace is the woman that played her uh, and she is the one in Howling and in Cujo. And I'm sure she's... I, I know she's been in other movies. I just don't know the name of them. 
But I always liked her. I thought she was so cute. I thought she played such a cute mama um, role. Um, one thing about being in the 80s that's true um, that you might see in a lot of these films is 80s was the biggest generation of um, latchkey kids. And I have a whole other section about that. Uh, 80s kids that I really want to talk about. I, I want to make another separate video about that, which I will here in the next few days. I probably won't make another video today. Um, but it's really interesting when you sit down and you look at... Uh, you, you know, everyone talks about, you know, there's generations. You've got baby boomers, you've got Gen X, you've got millennials, you've got Gen Z. Uh, and one thing I personally cannot stand is one generation blaming the other. Like, listen, every single one of our generations, we have good things that we brought to the table. And we brought a lot of bullshit, too. You know what I mean? Like, there's always room for improvement. Um... And I feel like the problems of the current generation are a direct effect of the previous generation. And I will get into that in this when I have this conversation about the 80s. Um, but again, it's not about blaming generations, right? I can't stand it when people are like, these damn millennials or these baby boomers have screwed it up for all of us just stop just stop with that mess it it's we're all in this together uh and i think we can all do great things together or we can destroy things together you know <sighs> but that's a discussion for another time anyway let's get back to the movie review okay so um Oh, here's a question that I had. Okay, so... Okay, now I live in Texas, so I don't know what it's like in L.A., right? But I know that this is in, like, the valley. And one thing that's interesting, which is another one of my favorite movies, but Steven Spielberg was working on E.T. and the movie Poltergeist at the same exact time. And I think that says a lot about the filming of both movies they both kind of have that same feel the cinematography the music seems very similar except one side is dark one side is light um, but it's even the same neighborhood it's like not the exact same neighborhood the houses are a little bit different but it's the same neighborhood so to speak just maybe not the same street um, so I thought that was really interesting but Poltergeist is another one of my favorite movies of all time and I will add that to the list of the movies I want ah, that I want to review but I'll probably save that one for um damn it Halloween I'm sorry I'm trying to get some Reese's Pieces there we go anyway so one thing I thought was interesting with Elliot and um E.T are about to meet. E.T. is hiding in the shed. Okay? First of all, it's misty as F out there all the time. And I'm sure they did that as just part of the quality of the show, like, to make it more mysterious or scary or whatever. But, like, their house backs up to a big-ass cornfield. Why? You're in a neighborhood. So, like, when you see the front of their house, it's a neighborhood. When you see the back of their house, it's a big old cornfield. And then you go up, like, this hill, and there's a wire, like a, what the hell do they call that? You know, like a gate. Like a, a metal gate thing with a red light which is creepy but it's on their property so I don't know anyway I just thought having a cornfield in the middle of a valley in California 
was weird. So, I made a note of that. Um, also, something that I thought was interesting, they had a microwave in there, and the first microwave, when we got our first microwave, they did come out in the 70s, but I think they were more commercial when they became more for residents. Um, when, when I mean commercial, I mean like big break rooms it, it like companies would have these big old microwaves when they became more for the everyday person um, that happened in the 80s and it was 1983 when we got our very first microwave and I remember it being just like oh my god it's space age like we're not we're never gonna have to use our oven again like this is gonna cook all of our meals girl no no, no, but don't. Mm -mm. No. I mean, I don't even... I might use it to make ramen. That's about it. But what's really cool is... When our first uh, meals came out... They... I feel like they were wrapped in foil. But it was something... I don't know what the covering was. I can't remember. But the plate itself was a ceramic plate like a real plate so it was hot as hell when you try to get it out okay um but you could reuse that shit like just pop it in the dishwasher and they were like this like literally like that big kind of oh uh rectangular but with rounded corners about that big and i just remember there being like a lot of italian dishes um, and they weren't bad. They were pretty good. Um, so, and we didn't have a lot of meals with them, but it was, it was still cool to have a microwave. You know what I mean? So we got our first microwave in, uh, 1983. Um, oh, and Elliot's the, in his room, he's got rainbow blinds. I wanted those blinds so badly they made his room oh so beautiful and I don't know if they said like I, I never see those anymore but those were oh, they just made his room so dreamy you know what I mean they were, it was, they were just beautiful so I was I always wanted those rainbow blinds I never got any but um <laughs> let's see if we would get a gag if like Elliot had what is this? Oh, one of the things when he's showing E.T. like things, here's, you know, a TV remote. Here's that. He picks up one of those. It's like a, a can of Coke, but it's spilt over and the liquid is just a piece of plastic. Um, and it's like a trick, like a gag gift. We used to buy those things at a place called Spencer's Gifts. I don't know if you guys, I don't think they're around anymore, at least not here. So, I don't know if any of you have a Spencer's or if you remember Spencer's, but I used to love going to Spencer's. That was so that that was part of a Saturday night for us 80s kids. Uh, go to the mall, you go to Spencer's, you don't buy anything because you ain't got no money, but uh, it was still fun. Um, I do remember the word, they used the word excellent a lot in this movie, and that did become a part of our vernacular. Uh, in the 80s, everything was excellent, um, awesome. We still use that to this day. Um, grody, you know, all the Valley Girl stuff too. Like, that's a whole nother. Oh, Lord. God. Ugh. I'll do that for you. I'll talk about that when we do, like, uh, Valley Girl. I'll review that movie, another one of my favorite movies, but. God, we were obnoxious. Just as kids, like, so obnoxious some of the stuff we would do. I don't know how our parents put up with this. I, I, I really don't. But, um, let's see here. Okay, so, at this point, uh, oh, and we had the same popcorn machine that, uh, Elliot has, which I thought was really cool. Um, so at this point, Mike and Gertie have found out about um, E.T. And they've all made a solemn promise not to tell Mama. Uh, and 
they've devised this plan where they need to try to get E.T. back to the forest where he, he was. And he's made this device um, that's going to help him try to get back to his people. And so what they do is they hide Gertie away, I guess. Whoops. And they put E.T. in this, like, ghost mask. And I think he had an old lady hat on top. I think. Shit, I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, I just watched this yesterday, I think. <sighs> so sad. I don't remember anything. But, um, so, this is so they can all get it out of the house because it's Halloween. And they can explain why they, they can't explain why they would have an extra person. So, they have... Gertie Hyde and they say that E.T. is Gertie in this costume. Of course mom's like oh my god you're so cute. Let me get the camera. Takes a picture and then sends them on their way like get home before dark. Trick or treating. What? No, 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 no. You would not do that today. But that's another discussion for the 80s. Oh. Ow. I bit my tongue. Anyway. Uh. That's how it was, ma'am. It was a different. It was different. Parents did not give two shits. They were just like, bye. Mama needs a break get the hell out. So, having four kids myself, can't say that I blame them. But, um, anyway, so, what you doing? Okay, anyway. So, um, okay. So, they, they make their way out of the house. And they get to the forest. But Elliot falls asleep because he starts not feeling great himself. And E.T. goes missing. Meanwhile, the whole time, these dudes, ever since his ship, at the ship landed the first time, these men, these scientists, I guess, knew that their ship had landed and had been searching for um, proof of life this whole time. So, sorry, my lips are chapped. Anyway, so, turns out, they find out, they find E.T., What is that? And they get him to Mike's Mike comes out to the forest and gets him back to their house where the scientists have set up camp. They're kind of I guess using Geiger counters or radioactive whatever on the kids on the house. Um They had the whole house, like, encased in what I call, like, it looks like a hamster habit trail. If you're my age, I mean, they still have them, but they came out during my age group, or my generation, was the, the hamster habit trail. And that's kind of what their house looked like, like, just, like, plastic tunnels and Elliot and uh, E.T. end up in this room together. And it looks like they're both dying. You know, Elliot can't barely breathe. He's talking. He's like, <gasps> you know, and E.T.'s making his little E.T. noises. But it seems that something changes 
and ET starts getting worse. And as he gets worse, Elliot starts getting better. He starts feeling better. And I don't know if it's because ET was sacrificing himself or if he knew like he's going to go into like this cocoon phase maybe where um you know he'll release himself telepathically by going into this cocoon phase and heal Elliot you know I don't, there's a couple of different uh things there that I think could have happened again I did not go and research all different uh theories on this movie because I just I have my own so either way um Elliot starts feeling better and so this scientist guy who is a sweetheart I mean he's a real nice guy he tells Elliot He's been looking for something like this his whole life. You know, proof of alien life ever since he was a kid. And so he understands why Elliot is so passionate about E.T. Uh, but he stupidly allows um, Elliot... I'm sorry, this is bothering me. Elliot to go and have an alone time with E.T. And so they end up kidnapping him or, you know, rescuing him. So they get him out, and by this time, Mike's older friends, who is, I believe one of them is C. Thomas Howell, who is another one of my favorite actors, who's in another one of my favorite movies um, called The Outsiders. I have bitten my tongue for the second time now. Uh, so it's one of those things where the more you talk, the more it, it swollen it gets. So I'm, I'm gonna start sounding funny, and I may start cussing. Okay, because it hurts. Anyway, so um, so they enlist the help of Mike's friends, and they get, you know, they they get on Elliot's bike, and they're running away as fa fast as they can on their bikes. Elliot is in, or ET is in the basket, Elliot's basket on his bike, and all of a sudden, they all lift up. And they're like, they're on their bikes and they're riding their bikes and moving their feet, but they're flying. Obviously, it's Elliot. Uh, but I thought that was a real cool scene and it definitely didn't seem fake at the time uh, or like movie magic. And even to this day, it works. Knowing everything that we know now about effects and everything, it still works, you know? The music. Oh, the, the, uh, God, the score of this movie is some of the most beautiful music. Oh, I just love it. I can still hear it in my head to this day, but, um, it's a really sweet scene. It's really cute. It's really magical. Uh, but they get to, you know, E.T.'s e people have finally come back and they get E.T. to where he needs to go and, um, Elliot doesn't want him to leave. You know, he's really attached. And earlier in the movie, uh, I think it was when Elliot cut his finger. And he had like a heartbeat in his finger because he, he cut it. And I, uh, E.T., you know, his finger lit up. And so, e Elliot told him, you know, I'll be right here, you know. I'll be right here, meaning he'll be in his heart. Like, he'll never forget him. And, oh, I cry right now thinking about it. Oh, my God. Oh, I was crying my little 13-year-old ass off in that movie. Where's my glasses at? That movie made me cry so hard. I've lost my glasses, y'all. I don't know where they are. Um, oh, here they are. But, yeah, I just cried so hard at that scene. And, um, and that's it, you know, he went back home and that was the end of the movie. Um, and I would say as far as childhood or I guess any space movie I've ever seen, oh, I don't know, man, I've seen some good space movies like 
Alien, Alien series, and Prometheus. I don't know. So let's say, as far as my childhood space movie experience, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Because I may, I may come across a 10. Wait, last time did I do 1 out of 5? I don't remember. I know it's something with Bulldogs. When I did Breakfast Club, what did I do? Did I even write it down? What is this? Oh, I don't know what. Lord have mercy. I swear to God. I need my iPad. Kelly's going to go, uh, my husband's going to go fix my iPad today because when we went camping, uh, I stepped on it and I broke it. Uh, just the screen. So I haven't had it in months. And so it would definitely be helpful to have that uh, with me because right now I'm just using my beautiful gold and glittery uh, notebook, which is great. I love it. I mean, who doesn't love a glittery notebook, but still. Anyway, so I'm getting up to 36 minutes on this video, uh, y'all. So I better go. But, um, Let's do a 1 out of 10 rating. I'll try to keep it at that because uh, I'll try to make a note of like, you know, this is what you're doing now. <laughs> or like, I don't know. But let's do, um, I, I will do, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 Bulldogs. I'm saving the 10 because of my crappy memory. But this is for childhood space movies only um and not we're gonna have a, a sweet category and a scary category because there are other space movies that are also gonna get nines but they're not uh sweet but they are aliens and i think y'all know what i'm talking about but for this movie um it, oh, it was good. Yeah, nine out of five, nine out of ten bulldogs. Uh, that's what I rate it. So if you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon. Uh, I think I did try trying. I did try trying. Hey, I did try to find it on uh, um, Hulu and Netflix for free. I did not have any luck, but I still recommend that you try. It doesn't hurt. Um, but I got it on Amazon for eight dollars um, and it'll be something that my grandbabies can watch when they get older you know and we got one of the greatest candies out of it ever known they still make them today these are great on chocolate ice cream or vanilla yum yum anyway that's it I gotta go read some books to my babies. Thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you where my supposed to look. Over here? Over there. Over there? Over here. I don't know. I'm just gonna look right in the middle. I will see you next time. All right. Bye.